So the devs have teased superchargers for quite some time now. Unfortunately, I am super impatient. And thanks to this new line of code that the devs have graciously put in the exporter code, we can just drag and drop and it's all done. We can now build things like this absolutely gorgeous Lancia Delta S4 properly. Unfortunately, this particular body is not available in the new automation build, so we can't really do it. So now let's rewind to show you what car I actually made for BMNG and twin charging. And what I'm wanting to do is create something like the super turbo, whatever it was, the little Nissan K car type thing. So we're going to set a really short body length and see what we have available. I also want to do a target top. It's been a while since I've done one. So like this, you know what, actually, yeah, we go, go for this. What we'll do is make this a solid part of the roof and then cut out the target top part to make it look as if that, that was actually how it was meant to be from factory. So to start this off, it's all going to be made of just straight steel. I would love to have anything other than front wheel drive or just front engine in general, but unfortunately that's just not an option with this body. So it's probably going to be a little bit more like the Suzuki Cappuccino with the front engine rear wheel drive sort of thing. So we'll go front longitudinal. So McPherson starts on the front for that extra engine bay room. And then in the back, we want something nice and flat, which we can fit around quite easily. So we'll go semi-trailing arm, I think, because you still have to be practical with these sort of cars, so I want to be able to have boot space. So I don't think we'll go with an inline three. The question is, is do I go the little miniature sort of K car, 600cc-ish sort of engine, or do I go smaller or do I go bigger? Because I kind of want to go like a 1.1, but I also want to go with something maybe like a motorbike engine. You know what? Yeah, screw it, motorbike engine. So absolutely minuscule stroke. Oh, we're going to have to make that even smaller in a bit. So we got dual over cam, four valves, a cylinder, more aluminium. Do we go harmonic damper? We'll see how it goes without that for now. We'll go cast, 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 and then drop that stroke down. Damn, we only get down to like just under 600 cc's. That's not what I was hoping for, but whatever. High as hell cam profile. Probably some stiffer springs. Probably no uh, variable valve timing for this time of life. What do you want to call it? My brain works, I swear. Some standard sort of turbo equipment. Injection, multi-point injection. Purse, no, wait, hold on, single. That's, I'm getting a bit ahead of myself here. And then low? Probably not. What about mid? That looks a little bit more like it. Compact, though, looks probably most likely to be what's in this engine bay. Give it a really high revving engine. Hopefully we can get this really high. I've just noticed something. I don't know if this is going to show up on the uh, recording very well, but I could see the all-wheel drive, rear-wheel drive, and four-wheel drive options here. So when I click this, yeah, it goes up. And it was behind there. It's not anymore. That's funny. That is very funny that that's a glitch that happened. <laughs> anyway, we're going to go with a short log because this is still like a production engine. Some sort of catalytic converter. A big baffled and because there's probably not enough room, we're going to go none there. And valve float out the wazoo. Let's increase the head quality a bit. Hmm. Nah, this thing just doesn't want to rev high, does it? Let's toggle the turbo graph mode. Yeah, that is not doing much at all. What compression range? Let's drop that down a little bit and start futzing around with the turbo. Wow, I'm just hitting the presets here. None of the presets don't detonate. <laughs> uh, they need to work on this whole uh, preset section. Now, what I don't mind is having a huge amount of turbo lag because that's what the supercharger is there for. It needs to be really big, doesn't it? Goodness gracious, there we go, okay. Yeah, unfortunately this engine does, doesn't want to rev beyond 8,000 RPM. I fear that there's something actually glitched here because for some reason we just can't get much power out of this, which we should be able to make a whole buttload more power than this. Do they want it to be naturally aspirated like instantly? And naturally aspirated, I'M MAKING MORE POWER! Uh, and then it just won't let it like not detonate. There has to be something not refined yet here. So here's a good example. Like look at me lifting up the cam lifter, uh, 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 sorry, the springs and lifters thing. It's going back and forth. Like that is, there is something wrong with the math. So all we can do is just try our best, I suppose. So after a bunch of futzing around, I was able to get like 51 kilowatts out of this very small engine. I was surprised I wasn't able to get more, but we're gonna put on a supercharger because under 6,000 RPM, this thing starts making no power. Like at idle, the thing creates five kilowatts, which is somewhere probably around seven horsepower. This is, yeah, going to require that supercharger to be able to run. So without the supercharger, let's give it a bit of a listen. Sounds like a fart cannon. 
And sounds about what do you expect probably from a K-car. Is it me or like, is that catalytic converter too small along with this muffler? Like that is the full baffled muffler. A reverse low? Yeah, there you go. Reverse low looks a little bit better. These exhaust bits are nothing compared to the actual diameter of the exhaust size. Like this is also very small. This is a 1.3 inch. Why haven't the devs fixed this yet? I mean, it seems like it'd be a fairly easy one to fix. Like, come on. Anyway, let's pick our body. Let's give it a cool paint job. Do we just want to go with a red on this one? Maybe. Oh, that looks good. Then we'll make the roof also the same color. And then we'll put the target top on that. I just realized that I wanted this to be light, but I don't think it's going to be able to be light considering that it's going to have like the convertible roof thing stuff. Anyway, is there any sort of morph we could do? Oh, a little bit. Can we wide body this sucker? Yes, we can. Oh, I'm a little bit in love. Might be one of my more favorite bodies. Rear wheel drive. We could go all wheel drive, but no, I think rear wheel drive will do for this one. A manual, a little bit of a five speed in there. Top speed's probably not going to be particularly high, so we'll drop that down considerably. We'll go a viscous LSD because those were quite common in Japan at the time. Then radial sports compound will probably, I don't know, maybe a medium compound would be fitting for today. I, I think we'll go with sports for now. Now, do we want to stay with small wheels and tires? Maybe. There might be a limitation on this, but I kind of don't want to live within your rules. Oh, that looks hefty. Probably not realistic either. 225s on the rear of a car like this. Let's drop that down. Probably like 175s would be more like it. Uh, we don't want to actually give it an under tree. We just want it to kind of look like it has one. So we'll leave that blank. Turn down the cooling factor on an engine so small. I don't know why. It just feels like that's the thing to do. Leave this as a detachable because, you know, it's Targa. Sports interior. Back would probably have some sort of standard cassette to start with. Hydraulic power steering some ABS in the early 90s? Probably not. And as for safety, do you... <laughs> no, thank you. And then a sports preset I think will be fairly good for now. This is so small. First thing I want to do though is I'm noticing that this wheel well is great. This one is quite full and looks like the back of the car needs to be lifted up a bit or the front down a bit. So I think we'll do a little bit of both here. So lift that up and then on the front, drop that down down just a smidge. That looks much better. That little bit of a tweak, love it. Then overall drop the suspension. Yeah, that looks fairly good. I like. What sort of top speed are we reaching? Oh no, you know what? Not bad. Not bad at all. 181 kilometers an hour. That's pretty good for a very small car. Though we are going to have the supercharger on, so it will be a lot faster again. But maybe we should raise this up a bit. Then make the first gear a bit shorter. And I think that's where we want it to sit. 0% wheel spin as well. Though it is going to have a supercharger on it, so it'll be a little bit more lively. Handling is quite a bit to the oversteer, which is not great considering we have a very short wheelbase. This thing is probably not going to handle, you know, the nicest. At least the aerodynamics shows that it'll probably be a little bit more in control. Probably a lot of lift on the front compared to the rear. All right. Let's figure out what we want the front to look like first. I kind of want to go quad round lights. Let's start off by trying something like this out. That does look pretty cool. We're not going to go full hardcore on this, but I think we might put something like this down here and we'll make that out of plastic. We are in the 90s or at least late 80s where the whole object of the game to win like people's hearts and minds was to create the most bulbous of bulbousy cars. Case and point. Now, now, we have to put on the obligatory scoop. You know, the sort of thing that ended up on Subaru's. And I want to go with an asymmetric design on the front. So we're going to first do the bumper part and then this grill here, we're going to have it asymmetric. Ooh. I've never done that before and I think I love it. Then we're gonna put a holder in here for the license plate and stick a license plate in here. Right about there. Now I'm thinking like vertical lines and something else on this side maybe. Hmm, this is looking so cool and aggressive. In my opinion, but still so cool and aggressive. Hmm, does that look out of place? I think it kind of does. That does look a lot better. I think we're going to put this in the Suzumabachi brand because they make lots of small cars. And we might call this, I don't know, Chariot? To be fair, I don't know how to spell Chariot. Turns out there's one R in Chariot. I am kind of falling in love with this, except for this hood vet. Doesn't really seem to fit 
quite the way I want it to. You know what? It probably goes off to one side. Something about it just doesn't look right though. I can't put my finger on it. Got these lovely little accent little vents on the side here, you know, for a little extra detail. Now for some mirrors. Probably a very default sort of mirror that kind of looks good anyway. I should probably pick out wheels and I want something big and bulbousy, which really fits the time period. Not really soft and round enough. That's no good at all whatsoever. I just want big round softed edged sort of thing. I think these are about the best fitting we're gonna get, except they're just still not really soft and round enough. Let's give them that painted alloy look as well. The high flake, medium shine, no shine? Yeah, let's go no shine on that. I think that fits as good as we're gonna get. I wonder what this wheel looks like with some concave done to it. Okay, it makes it just look kind of weird. Let's start actually working on the roof now to cut away. And I think instead of a targa, we're gonna go a T-top. Hmm. It's not looking good, <laughs> if I'm gonna be honest. Maybe if I make it narrower, it'll look a little bit better. Yeah, I think that works. Now to fill in the sort of like trench line. What I like to use for this sort of thing is this. It's currently in vents, which it shouldn't be, but it's basically a trim piece. And uh, it's about as good as we can get, I think, to get that to fit in there. I'm, you know, happy enough. I think I remember the last time I did a proper T-top was a really long time ago before I could even do things in 3D. So I'm really glad that this has come along. We've now made it to the back end and I want to put some sort of fake diffuser on the back. And then for like a little added extra quirk, I'm going to put dual exhaust on it. I think I like it. Then the sort of obligatory wing, which would exist back then as well. Something like this. There we go. Unfortunately, I don't think that is going to fit here. Like I could try <laughs> stretching it up to make it go into some clean air, but I, just, I don't think that's gonna work. And right about there, it looks weird and it'll probably do only nothing. Like it'll do straight up nothing. I also wanna go like to match the round headlights, I wanna go round taillights as well. In fact, I might actually choose exactly the same ones and just put them on the back as well. Hmm, I don't know. Let's maybe try changing this up to be a little bit more taillight colored. Hmm. Not quite. See, also one of the problems is, is if this was ever to pass most regulations around the world, you can't put it on the boot or at least the main lights because most of the countries, because of what happened in America, is you couldn't have lights on moving body parts. So that meant you couldn't really put them on boot lids. So I think I'm gonna have to say no to that. You could put like a fake light bar across, but that would be about it. I think that'll work. And now we just put a light bar of some sort across the back and I'm thinking it's a bit dated by the time period it came out, but I do like it. Right about there. Yeah, it looks pretty good. I like, I like. Now for some sort of fitment of license plate area. And I'm thinking I wanna try putting this upside down and fit that in there. Ooh. That does actually look pretty good. What if we hide it entirely? I, ooh, that looks really nice. What if we have it just a little bit offset from the lights? That also looks really, I don't know which one to go with. And it's really hard to show what I'm showing you because there's this really big massive light that doesn't seem to actually exist. Where is this light coming from? It's a big massive light on the back. What if I like go here and then zoom in? Could you see a little bit better now what I'm going at? So either that or fully inset into the light area. I think they both have their advantages of what looks good. But I feel this one is a little bit more 90s. This sort of layout looks a little bit more 80s and I love it and I love them both. I think I just, I just prefer this. Please in the comments, let me know full width or narrow width. Like which one do you think fits better? Maybe it's a more of a country thing. I don't know, this feels a little bit French, a little bit um weird and unique. Anyway, let's also get the license plate thing put in. I'm gonna use exactly the same trick. We're gonna use this vent hole, make it body colored, and then stick a number plate in said hole. Right, man, the E. I love so much about this car. Though nothing really seems to like match in terms of styling. It's all just a little bit weird. But seemingly, I don't think I care that much. I think it all just looks so good as like an eccentric collection of parts. I suppose the next thing to do is to fill out an interior. May as well start with the seats and you know what? These weird and quirky seats that popped up recently, I think fit kind of the idea of what we're going for here. Just weirdness, straight 
weirdness. I don't know, looks like, you know those people that put that um stuff in their muscles? Yeah, these guys that like do the gross sort of uh, big muscle sort of stuff. Like, oh, it looks so bad. That's what those seats remind me of. But I don't care because I think they fit this car nicely. As for the dash, do we go with the 90s one over the... Yeah, all right, 90s dash it is with these seats. The big problem is here is this is set up for America and Europe. So yeah, we're going to fix that. This is Japan. So we've got to have the right side drive. Unfortunately, to get this to sit right, we do have to have the big gap. So we're going to use a little bit of dash filler and fit that the best we can. And that's done a good enough job, I suppose. So I think we're going to do away with the interior floor and use this good old fixture for that currently. Yeah, that works immediately a whole lot better. And I think then we'll hide the chassis and that looks really, really clean so far. Now just fill in the boot and I think that's most of the interior just finished. All right, I did a whole bunch of futzing around off camera and I think that's good enough to go over. Now, how's our aerodynamics looking? Reduce that rear angle a lot. All we're really looking to do is to not really have any lift on the back, which is more of a spoiler thing and less of a rear wing sort of thing. But I think it's an acceptable thing to use a wing here. And I fear that this is a very deceptive graph. And this is one thing that kind of irks me a little bit when I'm trying to teach people about how to use automation. This is actually really good right now, even though that's showing you we're getting lift. If you look over here on the side, we're only creating negative one kilogram of lift. So like it's top speedy sort of area, it's only creating 1.1 kilograms of lift, which is is basically nothing. But we have lost a little bit of top speed. And uh, 0 to 100 is 14.3 seconds. That's not good at all. If we compare it to our closest competitor, the March Super Turbo, that's 7.7 .7 seconds to 100. That is really fast for the day. So I lightened it up a little bit. We're about 100 kilograms lighter now. And yeah, we're still only down to 12.1. How much power does this make? 81 kilowatts. This currently only makes 50, which means that it needs to make more than half off of its power again by just the supercharger. Ugh. Oh, this is 900 CC. Oh, I mean, even still, I should be making more power than this. Now I have actually undertuned this quite a little bit. As you'll notice here, we're only using about 88 of our octane because we are about to stick the supercharger on there and it'd be unrealistic for having this thing being like right at the limit of its fuel system and then stick a supercharger on. So, you know, I think it's maybe not that unrealistic. If I was to tune this to within then degree and use all of its octane would probably get maybe about 60 kilowatts. Anyway, as it stands, this is making a two minute 45 lap. So not the greatest. <laughs> oh no. And our quarter mile time is around 20 seconds, which is actually not far off from what a lot of cars in this time period would do. Let's however send this over to BeamNG and just see how much of a delight this car is. Before we do that though, let me show you what we got here. So open up your new mod that you've made, open up vehicles, open up the name of your car. And then wherever you have this downloaded, which there will be a link to this in the description, doesn't matter where it is, just click and drag it into here, click OK on that, and you have the supercharger. It is pretty much that simple. Now that we're in BeamNG, all we have to do is go to our engine under parts, uh, the vehicle config section, go from stock intake, to supercharger. Now ah, this thing idles really high. Is that the supercharger? Does the supercharger do that? Nope. It just idles at nearly 2000 RPM. That is bonkers. I don't, yeah, okay. Fine. Let's actually see what the power difference is now. Bring over our torque curve. And with it as it is, it creates about 100 horsepower. And without the supercharger intake, it creates a little over 50 horsepower. Okay, yeah. I think that's about right. So it's doubling the power, maybe a bit much. We could probably tune that down just a smidge. The pressure, one PSI, oh God. Let's turn down the gear ratio instead. And I'm aiming for about like 90-ish horsepower, which that looks about right. That is exactly 90 horsepower we're now getting with the supercharger. And let's also have a look at the power under the curve. Oh, okay, we could turn the supercharger off. You can see that we should be creating a little bit more power and you can just see that it's above the dotted line. Realistically, it should be a smooth extra amount of power over the whole thing, but BeamNG is not very good with superchargers because these sorts of superchargers, which this one is programmed to be, is a fixed displacement. So this is acting more like a centrifugal supercharger. So does it sound any different? 
I can't exactly hear it, unfortunately, which is a bit of a disappointment, but that's fine. We're just gonna clean up our UI now and see how this car handles, because I haven't done any handling tests. All we did was just bring it in and, oh, this thing is slow off the line, but at least when it gets to the top of the rev range, it is still really actually, you know, way too slow. <laughs> Oh dear, I wish I knew how to program superchargers better because I would totally... Oh god, this thing has a tendency to oversteer. I feel that it would be a little... Okay, this thing is way too oversteery. What is going on? Let's reduce our front camber. Except for the fact that I'm not actually seeing front camber in here anymore. Do they remove front camber? Oh, you know what? It might not be available for McPherson strut. That's... <laughs> Oh, bugger. Maybe if I just reduce the rear tire pressure a couple of BSI and increase the front a little bit. Oh, no, that was a, a choice that I made. Probably not the best one. Let's see how it now goes into the first corners of the Everton S is still a little bit more oversteer than what you would probably want from a mass production car, especially one in a country where, like, uh, doing anything unsafe is a big no-no. Yeah, nah, this thing is... Way too oversteering. I also realized I forgot to put in a steering wheel. Oh, I'm such a nong. Oh. Well, I mean, it's not the worst. You've got the idea. Oh, God. Okay, you know what? We might go and retune this, put a steering wheel in and everything. When did this become more oversteering? What the hell? Did I? Uh, oh, you know what it is? I changed the weight of the vehicle. So now it's changed. And even here it's saying it's oversteering. Okay. I should have looked at this again. <laughs> so I think the big question is, is do we drop the front tire with? I kind of really don't want to do that because of the whole uh, keeping symmetric tires thing. I think just, yeah, okay, there we go. <laughs> Removing that front camber fixed all the issues. All right, let's send this back. To make things a little bit simpler for you guys, what I ended up doing is I've got in here, I've got the stock intake, and now you've got a choice of screw supercharger, which is meant to be like the most efficient, though it's being overtaken again by like advancements in technologies here. The centrifugal supercharger, which is the uh, basically a turbo with a belt attached to it as opposed to the turbine housing on the exhaust. And then the root supercharger, is the one that would be here. And that one gives a uh, fairly good low-end power kick in. So if we just go with turbo versus turbo versus supercharger, immediately we're seeing a bump of over half a horsepower at idle. Now it should be a little bit higher than that still, but you know, it does all right. And our, our power at top end is about 83 horsepower. So we want about 10 more horsepower than that. So we still have all of the tuning in here. Let's just turn the ratio up just a smidge. That is a lot to go up 0.5. Oof. But we are now creating about 93 PS, which is about 100 horsepower, I believe. Now I've not actually driven this thing since I've done all the changes and now I've got the extra supercharger changes. Let's see if it handles quite well. You also see we got the steering wheel in there. Come on. Oh, it's slow off the line, but it does pretty well when it gets into the high end power. And hopefully this is very parasitic, uh, pa parasitic power. Or oh, too much oversteer. That is sucky. I was hoping that that wouldn't happen. <laughs> it seems that it's a little bit out of my control. Evans and Essence are proving to be a bit of an issue here. Oh my god, why is it still oversteering so much? Like, something is chronically wrong. Have I given this thing too much power? Is it too much of a beast? Nah, this thing is just getting lift off oversteer, like something chronic. Oh, you know what it is? It might be the semi-trailing arms, because I remember BMW back in the day tried it in the 90s, and it was dangerous. Ford came along about a decade later, revamped it, and tried to do it again, and it actually ended up being some of the best suspension that you can find on a big family car, in my opinion. Uh, they had it on, I think, the big Ford Focus and the uh, Ford Falcon that we got here in Australia. What sort of speeds are we going to reach? Are we going to max out our top speed with this extra, what was it, 50, 60, 70, in? about 40 extra kilowatts? That, oh, uh, hell's how, that's almost doubling it. Wait, hold on. I'm thinking kilos to horsepower. Oh god, yep, nope, this thing has a tendency to oversteer way too much. Oh god damn it! Oh no, the humanity. So maybe just a little bit of toe in on the rear. Drop the pressure, not maybe that much, maybe like to 23. And then this could probably go somewhere closer to 30. And I think that should fix all of our issue. Clutch dump. Oh wait, that's nothing. <laughs> I clutched up and it did nearly nothing. Let's try that again. Hold on. 
Yep, that's so gutless. Oh God, no, nope, we're still oversteering a lot. That is not what we want. How is this thing still oversteering? Why must you be like this? All right, over pressure the front tire. You know what, actually, I think 34 is not a huge amount of front tire pressure. So let's see. If that's like now we're over 10 psi difference oh god that cannot be good now let's give it a try oh we're still getting oversteer which is not great i think i might have to go back and redo the uh suspension setup and choose something a little less prone to you know killing the people that are trying to buy our product now nah, this is this is atrocious this sort of suspension is not doing it do i oh god why why is it oversteering so much? Okay, the brakes are atrocious. All right, I think I'm gonna have to go back for another reach into this car. Let's see how our brakes do though. Do we lock up a lot more on our front than our rears? Let's see how it goes. No, we are locking up on the rears a bit more. So to hell with this and the back, it's going to get double wish. I don't want to go double wishbone on the rear, but I think I kind of might have to. I mean, I could go a solid axle. Solid axles are very good at being sturdy and it will bring that price down a little bit, I think. Oh dear, that's... <laughs> <laughs> That's interesting. It does also allow us to have a relatively low floor, I think. But you know what, actually, this is meant to be a premium small car. So I think multi-link is acceptable. Also, our brake force is way, way off. Drop that all the way down. And our brakes are now close to being balanced. Now, I am so close to just saying screwing it and putting on smaller front tires, but I'm going to try to fix that with handling here. I don't think I can bring this oversteer down at all. So desperate times cool for desperate measures. God, this thing just wants to oversteer. Look at that. Even with much smaller front tires, it still wants to oversteer. Oh my God. God, look at that tire disparity. Now let's see if we can bring this back up to having less understeer here. Okay, I think we've done a fairly good job of flattening out this curve. We don't have the greatest speed here. Usually a very high performance car will be over 80, but we have very narrow tires. And now this graph is showing, oh, lots of understeer high speed but you know what it's better than what we had back you go into beam ng you know i haven't driven this without its turbo oh sorry without a supercharger on so how does it go without the supercharger oh my god it actually feels so much slower and then it kicks right at about 8,000 rpm oh god so nine and a half thousand red line that is pretty excessive oh you know what it's handling much better already it gets a little tendency to oversteer but it's still quite nice. So you get a little bit of liveliness. Let's put the supercharger on. Turn that ratio up like I did last time. And let's see how it does going through the slingshot now. A little bit of understeer there, but now we're getting oversteer. You know what? It's a bit dull to the turn in. That's what it is. But it has oversteer. So you somehow feel like you're getting understeer and oversteer at exactly the same time. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, like, no, my brand new car. Oh, our company has sunk all of our money into it. Now we're going to go bankrupt. I might put that actually into the lore at some point. <laughs> oh, floor it and yep, no, this thing bogs so hard. The rear tires are just too grippy. Probably should have actually gone with some maybe medium compounds because it doesn't really need sports compound for something so light and so, you know, not very good because it, it just has a, a, an atrocious lack of power. What are my brakes doing? Am I locking up too much on the front now? Okay, let's test out those brakes. I also just realized that the brakes are body colored. Why? Anywho, I suppose it doesn't really matter. Let's floor it down here and get it up to about 120 and see what the brakes do. I don't think we're going to reach 120, so let's just start testing our brakes. We are locking up. You know, fairly evenly, just way too much all around. Let's see how we go around Kilrob Chicane and then finally through Popsicle into Adam's Apex. So, floor it super hard, doing okay. And Popsicle is holding us fairly good. We're not getting caught out, which I don't expect us to. Heading now into Adam's Apex is gonna be the big issue. I'm gonna hope for about 60. Oh, we held nearly 70 all the way through there, apart from like the dodgy brakes and everything. This is pretty fast, actually. Now, I'm 
I, let me be clear, this is not a fast car. It's just much better than what I was expecting. Let's grab a performance timer. Now I know we're a little bit downhill, but it probably won't make too much of a difference. And a zero to hundred with this on is really slow. A zero to hundred is just shy of 10 seconds. It should have been so much faster than that. All right, let's try on a little bit more of a flat area. Get those revs up and boom. And try to keep it in the top rev range. Hopefully that gave us a little bit of extra time. Come on, and 9.74 seconds. That is not great. Let's actually test to see what this does around the uh, drag strip. Why would I say around the drag strip? I need to get my brain good. And let's go and see how we do against a, you know, a direct competitor to this car. Three, two, one, go! Oh, it seems... No, yeah, no, you got the launch on me, as you saw there. That's the only reason it's ahead of me is because it just managed to get the Christmas tree just right. Myself, however, you know, I'm I'm not gonna jump the start or anything. I'm gonna do a legitimate time down the drag strip, which was just shy of 18 seconds. Not fast, but certainly not slow. <laughs> oh God, all right, let's go take this over and do Phil Hill. Let's see what this bad boy does. God, I love the look of this thing. It's just so cool looking. Now, currently on Phil Hill, the slowest time is two minutes. And that was the Suzumabachi trainer, which is basically the same car. So, we're gonna see if we can beat that little mm, diminutive vehicle. Probably not actually, this one is much older than that, and that one is like a mid-engine sort of thing. Just more for the shats and gaggles of it. This, you know, it's actually handling quite nicely, no ESC. Gotta be careful about dabbing at the brakes too hard, the thing will kick out and kill you just in the most brutal of ways. But we're doing okay. Oh, gotta watch out for that gutter right there. And then break it down here into oh, the first major hairpin and oh, we don't have rear tires. Not gonna lie, this actually feels a little bit slower. But let's see how we go into the corner this time. Oh, lots and lots of uh, brake lock up there, but it's fine. We've got it under control then at the T-junction. Nice sweep around, keep it as smooth as possible. You really do have to keep this thing in the power band, and that's really true for a lot of small, low-powered cars. You just have to not worry too much about apexes, but more about keeping that speed up more than anything else. And changing gears constantly, BeamNG, is not how we keep our speed up. Thank you very much. I should probably, honestly, control it myself, but I just don't want to... I just want to drive this thing, have fun. Oh, God damn it. Well, we're at the end of the top hill part, and that is where we get most of our wheel spin. So that'll be fine. Once we get around this corner, it should be a little bit smoother and more reliable as to picking the right gear. There you go. See, look at that. On corner exit, we kept the gear we want. It's just a little bit of kick out that we get as well that causes the problem. Oh, very unsettled <laughs> because of the gutter there on the braking zone. That was kind of like the worst place to get unsettled. Getting unsettled on corner exit, sure, we could save, but getting unsettled on corner exit is uh, entry is much worse because you can end up crashing quite badly. Come on, game. Pick a gear. But that's fine. Oh, no, we've just crossed the two minute mark. I wonder if I go full sweat mode, if I can knock off that five second gap, that is a lot of time to have to knock off. Bugger. Well, it's currently sitting right dead last. I, however, I'm gonna go full sweat mode and see if I can't fix that. You know, whilst past me is doing this, I can actually take this opportunity now to ask you to like and subscribe and, you know, leave comments and all that kind of jazz. And a 201.6 on going full sweat mode, controlling the gearbox manually. It does move us up just a smidge, but unfortunately we're still way in last. I mean, I suppose there's always gotta be a slowest car, but it's so disappointing because this is so cool. I really probably should have made this front wheel drive though, if I'm gonna be honest, but yeah, whatever, you can't win them all. Well guys, I hope you have all enjoyed this video quite as much as I have. I was hoping to make the Lancia Delta S4 when I first started doing this, but then yeah, I couldn't get the 
bodies that I wanted. There was too much of a uh, cramped engine bay problem that was constantly happening and all that sort of stuff. Oh God, no! But uh, I think I'm actually really happy with this, probably more happy than what I would have been with some clone again of another car. I really do create too many clones. I do love making my own works like this. And I hope you guys have as well. But for now, I'll let you know that there is actually still more to come. This slot stuff allows so much and there will be more of it in the future. So if you're not subscribed, go ahead and subscribe. And if you haven't liked it yet, please go ahead and like it. But for now, I'll catch you all next time. Goodbye.